God, this kind of feels dirty. Do you want me to take my XLR cable off? What? You want me to put on an XLR to USB cable? You want me to use it? Get out! Out! Once again, I have to ask you to love me at the beginning of this video because apparently that's what YouTubier people than me say I should be doing. So please like, maybe subscribe. You could do both. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Today we're dispelling some of the myths from the IGN video about the best mic you can buy. Now, the video in question does have a few bad facts in it and we're going to work our way up to the biggest one. Can you use an XLR to USB cable with an SM7B? Now, if you're unsure of the video that I'm referencing, I'll link it below, or frankly, if you don't wanna sit through it, I can't blame you, I will explain some of the bigger issues. Now, the video recommending the best mics for content creation from cheap to pro is a list including the Razer Siren Mini, the HyperX Quadcast S, and the Shure SM7B. The Mini being the cheap, the SM7B being the Pro, and the HyperX being the weird one in the middle with RGB. Now, to be honest, I'm not gonna pick apart their mic selections. Not really what it's about, though there will be a couple thoughts scattered throughout. First up, we're gonna talk about pickup patterns. Now, the Razer Siren Mini is a small mic with a super cardioid capsule which means it has a smaller area in front of the mic that will pick up audio. This is why we do off-axis rejection tests on all mics, to show how it sounds when you're not talking directly into the microphone. Now, this first bungle isn't necessarily IGNs alone, as they use some of the material from Razer. That said, they used it and they didn't see anything wrong with it. Mics with a super cardioid pickup pattern need to be in line with the sound hole on your face or the audio is gonna suck. So just don't do this. Now, it also might seem like a small complaint, but just stay with me. There's a bit of a reason for this. In the video, the host keeps referring to the noise reduction of the microphones, which is a bit of a misleading term. There is no process happening inside the microphone that reduces noise. However, there is noise rejection happening from off axis to the microphone. So it rejects noise coming in from certain angles. Now, once again, that is one of the reasons we do off axis noise rejection. Next up is phantom power. And this is probably the most ridiculous thing in this video, but it is implied that you need phantom power to operate a dynamic microphone like the SM7B. Now, it's explicitly said that you don't need it, but it, that it helps a lot along with this graphic. No, <laughs> just no. Dynamic mics need more gain. Condenser mics require phantom power. Now, in case you didn't know, the reason condenser mics require power is due to the capsule, which requires a polarization charge to the back plate of the capsule to operate. Dynamic mics just have a magnet with a voice coil wrapped around. No power is necessary. But this is why dynamic mics require more gain, as the power capsule on the condenser gives more output. In fact, there are some mics that can get destroyed with phantom power, which is why this is such a bad idea to tout. So with that in mind, just follow the guidelines of the specific microphone that you're using and don't get too happy with the 48 volt button on your interface. And finally, ooh, the actual reason for this video. XLR to USB. Now, when recommending the SM7B, they said you'll need an interface with this microphone. But oh, don't worry, if you're running cheap, why not just buy an XLR to USB? Huh, what a great idea. Well, to explain why that's just stupendously dumb, let's look at what this cable is. You see, the difference between a USB mic and an XLR mic is the ability of it to talk to your computer. Now, 
For a microphone to talk to your computer, it requires something called ADDA conversion, which is audio to digital, digital to audio converter. That's what an audio interface does. It converts your sound hole energy and makes it digital so you can see it and hear it on the computer. Magic. A USB mic has all of that inside of it. Also, there's something called a preamp. That is what takes the signal coming out of your sweet, sweet SM7B and amplifies it to a line level sound so it doesn't sound like a whisper. Now, the preamps are what can add noise to your recording. So the better the preamps, the quieter the sound floor. So with that logic, that would mean that the more expensive the preamp, the quieter, which is generally the case. Also, preamps can impart their own sound characteristics. In some of the cheaper ones, it's not really a good thing. Now, the preamp in a cheap USB condenser mic is going to struggle to keep up with the preamps in a higher-end interface, right? Well then, with that in mind, this cable cost me $10, and it includes a preamp and converters. Now, with all that information, what do you think you can extrapolate from it? Yeah. This. This is the SM7B through my AudioFuse Studio. And this is a test of the SM7B on the USB to XLR. Or I guess the XLR to USB. The gain is miserable because this is an SM7B that requires a lot of gain. This is a bad idea. Have I gotten my point across? The sure sounds horrible like this. Also, I'm eating the mic. That is all. Back to the other guy. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Aiden, you only spent $10 on yours. Why don't you get a more expensive cable? Well, you'd be right. There are more expensive cables. In fact, sure has one that I'm sure sounds good but it costs more than an entry-level interface. Why would you make that decision? So, should you buy one of these? No, not a chance in hell. I, I mean, that said, I do have a special message for IGN. If you guys want to do a crossover special where I can go over the benefits and drawbacks of each, hit me up. I won't even charge you to do the video, other than the shameless self-promotion for my channel while I'm doing it. But seriously, if you want, reach out. I'm more than happy to collaborate on something like this. I'm sure we can both benefit from getting the right information out there. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, why don't you check out my review of the Shure MV7. That's a USB mic that I was kind of polarized on it, but I think is one of the best USB mics out there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.